Hey, so I just want to show how I do a Final Cut Pro library sharing using a Google Drive cloud workflow so that I can send a project to an assistant editor at a remote location and they can do some setup for me and then send it back with a rough cut so that I can do the finalization. What I've done is I have my, uh, I have my dailies from the, my last batch of videos that I've recorded and I've put them in folders like this. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to organize so that I know what's came from what. This is my first camera, my second camera, and this is my audio recorder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new library and I'm going to call this 2018-08-22-23. All right, so that creates this. I'm gonna name this event dailies and I'm gonna put that character at the top so that it will sort to the top. Um, I also need to make sure um, we want the uh, media files to be stored in the library and we should do uh, motion content should be in library, cache should be in library and that's all good. Okay, so that's all set up. What we're gonna do is hit import media and here's my um, my dailies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import these two and I'm gonna say leave files in place. Um, and I'm gonna apply keywords from folders um, just so that if my assistant editor needs those, that's good. I'm gonna uncheck that so that I can do the uh, audio files separately. So I'm gonna import that now, um, audio files you have to do differently because we're going to create some uh, proxy files and um, Final Cut does not make proxies for audio files, so we've got to make sure those go into the library. So I'm going to do copy to library. Uh, I'm going to close the window when I do this and hit import selected. So it's going to copy. Alright, so that's all done. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find all of the video files and come up to Smart Collections and just hit All Video. And I'm going to select all of these. Right click, Transcode Media. I'm going to do Hit uh, Create Proxy Media. So we're going to make proxies. Okay, so our proxies are generated. Uh, we need to verify that they are there. Yep, so we're going to go Proxy and yes, they are there. Try to switch back. Okay. So to review, what we've got set up is I've got a folder on my computer and dailies, and then I've got one for each camera file, and these are symlinked into the library. Um, so these are the original media files, and they're not copied into the library. Um, my audio files were copied into the library when I imported. That's important because Final Cut does not make proxy files for audio. So they need to live in the library for sharing. Okay, so if we right click on the library, show package contents, here's the folder for the event, and then transcoded media, um, proxy media, This, these are the ProRes 422 proxy files for my original media. We're going to put these in compressor, but what we need to do is make sure they get saved out to a different folder. So what I've also done is make a proxies folder um, that I'm going to have them land in. And what we're going to do is make a smaller version of these for cloud sharing. Um, there are a couple other tutorials about how to do this. I'm basically just copying what they did um, with one little exception, and that is that um, if you use one of the built-in compressor default locations, like desktop movies or source, you'll see over here that the, um, the file name format shows source hyphen setting. And so that's going to make a file name um, with the name of the setting on the end. Now we don't want that. We want it to have the same name as the, um, as the proxy media that Final Cut generated. So it will think that this is the same proxy file that it created only it's going to be smaller. So what I've done is create a custom destination for that proxies folder and I've made sure that the file format is different. It's just source. That means it will be the same name as the source file. Okay, so 
I'm going to drag the setting on first. So um, I've set up this cloud editing proxy. And what that does is it's, um, it's a frame size that's a ratio of the original. Um, I'm going from uh, 1080p. Um, so I've chosen 480 by 270. Um, and then it's a H.264 with a 1000K for the, um, the bit rate. Um, I tried lower bit rates when I was testing this um, and found that about uh, you start to lose the quality um, too far once you get below 1000. It's not useful for the uh, assistant editor on the other end. So that's about as small as I could go without sacrificing the, uh, the ability to actually use the video files on the other end. Okay, then the other important thing is you need to have um, enable audio pass through checked. You can't compress the audio down. It needs to stay the same as it was for Final Cut to recognize this as a proxy file. Okay, so that's all set up. So I'm gonna drag this on here and put this all on the same one. And then I'm gonna Command A to, count, uh, to select all of these. Um, now, uh, here's a tip. If you right click just on one of these and choose the location, it'll only change this one if you right click up here in the gray part and change the location with all of them selected, it will change all of them. I don't know why that is, but that's uh, something that I've discovered. Okay, so we're gonna start batch. So the compressor job is done. Um, so we should now have proxy media. Um, so I'll go back to finder and check. Okay, so here are my proxies. And you'll see, I'm just comparing these first two. We've gone from 1.7 gigabytes to uh, just under 300 megabytes. That's pretty good. Um, so we're gonna take these, and if you wanted to um, put these somewhere so that you don't have to generate them again, that's fine. I just like to delete them because you can just regenerate them. Um, all right, so we're gonna just copy the new proxies in here, and then we're gonna go back to Final Cut and make sure we've still got those proxies. Optimize, we'll just refresh it. Proxy, yep, okay. So you can see the drop in quality with the uh, the proxy media. So this library is all set up. Again, to review, um, what we've got is a library that has sim links to the original video files, the huge files. And then we've got audio files copied in so that those will carry over in the package. And we've got proxy media files that have been squished down with compressor to a much smaller proxy size, um, pretty much using the, uh, the Uber proxy workflow um, that I saw in another tutorial. This project file is basically ready to go, so what I'll do is I'll compress it. And then while that's compressing, what I'm gonna do is go to my Google Drive, and I've got a team drive set up for my editing team and so what I'm just gonna do is just drag this on there now we're compressing it so that um, Google Drive um, can see all the insides of the package contents of the uh, the library so if you upload just the uh, the library it will corrupt it so what you want to do is compress it into a zip file so that um, Google Drive doesn't mess with the contents of the library all right, so I'll just drag this in here. That copies over, and then it just starts uploading into the cloud. So we're gonna open the library that I just copied to my desktop here. Okay, and what we should see is um, if we put it on optimized, we'll have offline media. But if we go to proxy, there it is with our um, smaller proxy files. And we can make events, we can set up multicam, we can uh, do anything like that um, that we want to. Once the assistant editor has made changes, all they need to do is compress their new file. I like to have the assistant editor make a copy of their library and uh, rename it something like um, dailies done or something like that so that um, we still have the original compress that put it back in the um, uh, you can see in my uh, workflow here that um, see I've got one here daily set up that was my previous one 
um, that's got all of the um, all of the um, the multicam and project files and a rough cut of everything all set up um, by my assistant editor. Um, and then when I open that up over here, um, uh, I would drag down the uh, the compressed file, open it up, um, put it back onto my media drive, and then it would all show up here um, correctly. Um, and I'll be able to switch back to the optimized media and use that to finish the cut and uh, deliver the final video. Um, I hope this is helpful to you uh, if you're trying to do a uh, remote editing workflow with a uh, shared Google Drive or a Dropbox or any of those cloud sharing um, options. So thanks for watching.